Give then, and I want to give us just two points from here, and we'll pick up the other ones in Bible study, but I want to give us two points. So this is what, so read with me, so on your outline, these are the minimum points you ought to have if you have your outline with dominion. Everything should be completed now, except the O and the N. I have an O and the N to give you, and then I want to talk, pull it all together. So at minimum, these ought to be in place on your outline. So this, well, the D ought to be what? Dominion. dominion. The power, the strength, ability, and might to rule. The O is what? Over all the earth. All that came from Genesis chapter 1. Then the M and the I came the next week. Let's read that. The M was what? Made, Made to have dominion over the mighty. And then the I was Israel, which means what? God prevails. That all came from the book we were looking at Deborah over in Judges chapter 5. Then last week we took a look at Psalm 8. The, the N and the I. Let's read the N again. Name is excellent in all the earth. And then the I. We are what? in charge of God's handcrafted world. I want to give us a, an O and an N here and then pull this all together. So all this has been laying the foundation. And I want to make sure we leave here today knowing how are we able to walk in, live in the dominion God has given us. Here's your O right here from verse 14. Over them shall the upright have dominion. Over them. There is no such thing as dominion under. It's always dominion over. And it says right here, over them, if you look at the text of all of Psalm 49, these are people there who really were just anti-God, trying to live against God. And what the, the, the Psalms of Korah are saying here, that we have, the, we have the strength, ability, and the might to make sure whatever they're doing, we now have the strength, ability, and might to rule over all the works they're doing, trying to disrupt God's plan. Over them shall the upright have dominion. All right? And then in the end, I want to go back and look at here. This is from the message translation, 7 and 8 from the message. Read this with me, if you would. No, no such thing as self-rescue. Hmm. Pulling yourself up by your bootstrap. The cost of rescue is beyond our means. In other words, he's saying, nobody can save ourselves. Nobody made it where we are by ourselves. Amen, somebody. Nobody made it where There's no such thing as a self-made man or self-made woman. Everybody had help. And as a believer, we got help from the Holy Spirit. And there's no such thing as self-rescue, putting ourselves up our own bootstraps, because the cost of rescue is beyond our means. I love that from the message translation. Where it's saying at this point, so now that I recognize I can't rescue myself, now that I know that the power is not in me, but it's in him. Now that I know that I become extraordinary by trusting an extraordinary God. Now I have the mindset to be able to embrace the dominion God has given. Now that I know that I didn't do this, I'm not where I am. I don't have what I have. I didn't achieve what I achieved by myself. That I did it by the help of the Lord. And now that we are humble, being empty, now we can allow the Holy Spirit and the wisdom from God to fill us up. So now that having been said, I want to give us our last one that we have here from our, our last spiritual principle here. It's about this idea about. It. So read this with me first, and I want to go back and say how we apply this. Read this, please. Jesus died to reclaim your what's birthright. Some of you had a right to because of your birth. Okay. All right. Now, 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 now go and take your dominion. So what is it? Dominion is what? When we got born again, part of the benefit package was dominion, birthright. When we got born again, part of the benefit package was joy. When we got born again, part of the benefit package was peace. All part, it, was, it was not just about keeping us out of the non-smoking section. It was trying to make sure we had everything that pertained to shalom, which means completeness, thoroughness, and wholeness. All right? So this is what our dominion looks like. So here's the question. How do believers actually exercise our dominion? So now we've made the foundation. We, got the, we now know the, the, the foundation. We now know the, the definition. We got the beyond the opinion. We've now looked at scriptures to talk about all these points building up to dominion. How do we actually exercise our dominion? Let me, let me, let me do, do use this by using an example and then walking us through how we how offer. Using this as an example, we can apply to other points about dominion, okay? How many of us have ever had any difficulty with life or been hurt by somebody in life at all? Amen. All right, so, so now here's the point. So now when that occurred, how do you feel about that? 
mad, angry, or upset, all right? So let's just go with the fact that let's go with the fact that we got angry. Let's, let's go with that, all right? Let's go with that. Is that, is that. is that a fair point? That somebody did something and they caused us problems and got angry? Can we go with that? Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, okay. We don't have to have a special press session for Kitty over here. She, 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 she's like all into it. Right now, so, right, so here's what anger is. Now, let's put this. Anger, read this with me. It is what? A strong feeling that makes you want to hurt somebody or be unpleasant to them because of something unfair or unkind that has happened. Now, I know in the church we all, oh, hallelujah. Now, at some point, if we real honest, something happened and we start thinking about that thing. And you try to talk about dear my God to then you talk about how I'm giving them back to the idea was. And so now, so I'm, 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 I want to share with you, and I know you, you, may, maybe y'all maybe I'll much further along. But but in the midst of the most painful part of my life, there were two people in life who caused me so much pain that I would sit up at night thinking about it. Thanks. Thinking about it. How to go back in and, and get them. Right? And, 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 but here's the thing. Like, I didn't want to get them. So I did time. But I wanted them to get gap. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted them to be gap. And I ain't had to do it. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so somebody said, oh, poor thing. I'm like, oh, that's really. So that I do it. And then, so I would just kind of be consumed. And you know, and, and you know, and, 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 and I know y'all have never had this problem, but I would replay conversations in my mind with him. And I should have said this. If I see him again, I'm gonna say this. And I'm creating interactions with them in my mind that never occurred. But if I see them at food line, what well, is gonna be on? So I had a thing laid out. And so, but what happened, so this anger was starting to just consume me. Because all I kept doing was thinking about what they did, what they said, how dare they do it. If anybody did after all the stuff I did, I just got myself all worked up. Then you know you all worked up. You can't go to sleep at night. You know, it's, it's 10 o'clock. Well, right open. 11 o'clock, eyes even more open. 2 o'clock, hour, and then all oh, you're doing this. So, so I, what I realized was they have gone about their business. And here I am, all worked up. If I see them again, well, they better not see me at Dollar General. They are all these things working in my mind. So here's what happened. So, and what I, so in order, I, dominion was dominating me rather than, the anger was dominating me rather than me having dominion over it. See, domination means subjugation. Domination means captive. So anger had me captive. That's, that's the difference between dominion and domination. Domination means you've held something captive. You got somebody in the headlock, captive. So anger had me in the headlock. Well, all I could do was try to get, and, and again, I didn't want me to get them back, but I did want them to get back. So the idea was, so, that, so, I, so I, was, I was just consoled with it. But it wasn't hurting anybody but me. I'm the one up at night. I'm the one uh, going through all these challenges. And, that, uh, and, 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 and when I hear something, they're doing all well. I'm like, I can't believe they're doing all so that I just, I'm the only one being hurt here. So, what I, so, I, I, so this is my first real understanding about this whole idea of dominion. Here's the first thing I did. I had to go back and start researching some verses on dominion, uh, on, on anger. Now, I'm just using anger as an example. Whatever it is in your life, just use it. So I went so I, so I went back and started researching things on anger. Let me give you so here a couple of verses that came about anger. Read this with me, please. Good sense makes one slow to anger. So if you don't have good sense, I right, keep going. And it's his glory to, to overlook an offense. Alright. Another translation. A wise man restrains his anger. I wouldn't be restrained. Keep going. And overlooks insults. Remember, do what they do is have insult. So the idea was, this is to his credit. Hmm. Another verse. This is from Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verse nine. Don't do you see that? Do not be quickly provoked in your spirit, for anger resides in the lapse 
of a fool. So, that thing really got to me. Right? <laughs> you know, I was all right trying to get them back. I wasn't cool with being a fool. And so then this one was very clear. Anger resides in the bosom, heart of a fool. So if I'm holding on to anger, it's making me a fool. So that is. And then Proverbs 16, 20, 32 says, you read this with me? One who is slow to anger, I'll way up to there, is better than the mighty. Keep going. One who rules his spirit, and not like anger take over, and, and then the one who takes a city. Hmm. So let me put it all together. And this is the last one right here. This is really got me. James, the, the, the fool really got me in the Old Testament. Right here. James 1.20. Read this, please. For a man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. So my anger is stopping the righteous life that Jesus died for me to have to be seen in my life. I'm so tight. Can't see righteousness. Wound up, you say. You can't see righteousness. So that anger does not bring about, does not demonstrate, does not show the righteousness, the righteous life God desires. So what happens here? So how do we exercise this? So let me give you, here's a format for us to use about how to deal with them. I'm just using anger as an example. We can do whatever. So let's, let's, repeat this, let's repeat this together and you can put in, and you have it on your slide, and you can put in whatever, you, whatever it is for you as well. Let's read this together. God, I thank you that Jesus died to reclaim my birthright of dominion. Now, let me be clear before I go here. I'm not saying you got to read every word here. I just want to give us a framework to be able to exercise our dominion, okay? So let's keep going. And since I desire to reflect how we talk about our foundation, keep going. Fulfill my godly responsibility. We talk about foundation. Keep going. And have a loving relationship with you. Talk about our foundation. Keep going. I now exercise my strength, ability, and my dominion to rule over my, in this case, anger. Whatever it is. Keep going. And according to, in this case, whatever the verse is, James 1.20, I am now free from anger. To demonstrate the righteous life you desire for me. That's how we take dominion. Yes. That I, that, that I, we don't take dominion in isolation. Dominion says, God, I want to thank you according to your word. I now have dominion. It's my, it is my blood bought right to have. It was part of the benefit package. And now, according to your word, I now am going to exercise, in this case, anger. I'm now going to demonstrate the righteous life you have for me. And I have now pulled down the stronghold of anger in my life. Never to walk around this anger again. Because I am free. And who the son is that free is free in me. That's how we walk about and utilize our dominion. So here's your format right here. First of all, you got to acknowledge you got some dominion. Everybody good on dominion? We got dominion? We have, it's a blood-bought right, a birthright to believe. Then what we do, we go find, we go find the verses and we confess them. This time. Now here's the point, let me tell you. The first time you start confessing the verse, you're not gonna believe it. You talking about right here, talking about Jesus, that, that I'm, I'm supposed to forgive, you don't have what I want to forgive. That, but, you, 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 but you keep on saying it. And you keep saying because the word will transform you. You keep on saying it enough after a while. You're going, to start, you're going to start seeing what you say. So you go back in and you acknowledge you got the menu, confess the verses, and here's the point now. Here, this is the part I want. I've never heard this before. Then declare the outcome of exercising the menu. Declare the outcome because I now am exercising the menu according to the word I should see this. Now that I'm exercising the menu according to the word I see this. And so now, according to James 1.20, when I know, when I now exercise my dominion over anger, I now can demonstrate the righteous life God has for me. So it's not just about saying I got dominion. What is the outcome that's going to build the kingdom? What's the outcome that people can see? What's the outcome that's going to make a difference? It's not just saying I'm going to take a minute over this. I'm going to take a minute over this twinkie. No, I got to, I'm going to take a minute over this twinkie. So now get back to this trip. Now then, I'm going to take a minion because there's an outcome to be seen that's going to end up honoring God. Yes. 
that I'm not, I'm take, I'm not taking a minute in isolation.